Oh, this is cool. A transplant from the mainland to beautiful southeast Hawaii five years ago, Michael Subman settled in well to Puna. After growing up in Hollywood, he and his family just kept moving west. He now lives with his four cats on his farm, tending to tropical trees, plants, and flowers. Michael is the loving father of two adult children. Michael did not have a religious upbringing, raised on, in a Reformed Jewish family. Michael always had a connection with the higher power and has been a student of A Course of Miracles for many years. He is a practicing attorney in the, in the area of family law. His practice is conflict resolution oriented with a fo focus on associated, excuse me, assisting families in high conflict child custody cases. He has been an attorney for 24 years. He is an explorer a student, and is always searching to grow spiritually. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Sudman, please. I'll try and manage this uh, microphone a little bit better than the last time. Is that good? Well, first I want to thank all of you for the opportunity to come and speak here again. Um, I had a really good experience the first time you all welcomed me really um, in a beautiful Ohana Aloha way. Um, I attended here several times, but I'm not a regular attendee, but uh, Rev Bev is one of my dear friends and I love her very much and I know she's watching somewhere. So <laughs> I want to talk to you today about beliefs, things that we believe. And first I want to say I, I believe that I'm the light of the world and I share that light with all of you. I believe also you are all the light of the world, and I'm willing to have you share your light with me. I believe we're all the light of the world to share our light with each other, and for that sharing, I'm truly grateful. I believe love saved my life. I believe love is truth. Uh, sorry. I believe love is eternal. You know, we all have beliefs, personal to each of us. We grasp onto them tightly without much thought. Uh, often our reaction is uh, immediate in the situation, knee-jerk. We don't even give much thought to it at all. We just say it, and we believe it so to be true. A belief in the dictionary, uh, the definition says, a state or habit of mind in which trust or confidence is placed in some person or thing. We all carry our beliefs in every situation, from the simple things uh, to the most difficult events in our life. We apply those beliefs automatically, and again, sometimes without much thought or consideration. I'm going to tell you a story uh, uh, that happened to me recently, and it may be insignificant in its context, but it's, uh, it was totally life-changing in its feeling and meaning. I was at breakfast. Um, I don't eat breakfast normally, but I was with a friend, and uh, she eats breakfast. So we went to breakfast, and what I remember a lot about that day was the menu on the wall was beautifully painted and it had rows, you know, muffins, omelets, pancakes, uh, 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 scrambled eggs, uh, you know, just a myriad of things, but it was beautifully dec uh, you know, painted beautifully. So I, I said to myself, well, I'm gonna have a cup of coffee, you know? And so my friend said, do you wanna split an omelet? And I thought, Right away, sure, you know, without thinking too much. She then followed with, pick one. <laughs> oh my God, right? So picking one from this beautiful menu wall, I gazed up and contemplated and I'm thinking and I'm wondering, I'm wondering what she's gonna want. We've never split an omelet together before. <laughs> so out of the myriad omelets, I selected number seven, the Neptune. I like the name, but I really like the ingredients. Chicken, avocado, cheddar cheese, and this had sun-dried tomatoes in it. Uh, I know, not something really important, but I was really considering. I thought immediately, I don't like sun-dried tomatoes, uh, but uh, I'll 
have that omelet with you, uh, I can always just pick them out, you know? She said, well, no, don't get the omelet if you don't like sun-dried tomatoes. Uh, get something else. We don't have to split it. And I'm thinking, how awkward, you know? Like, it's literally something so simple about an omelet. So, I dug in, you know, I'm saying, these are my beliefs, I know it, I don't like sun-dried tomatoes. You know, let's just get it without sun-dried tomatoes. She says, I picked that omelet. Oh, I forgot to say, she picked the same omelet. That was cool, right? So, she said, I picked it because of the sun-dried tomatoes. <sighs> Awkward. So I said, I think I'll just have pancakes. You get your omelet. Okay. She said, Why don't you like sun-dried tomatoes? Literally. We're talking about really big stuff. Why don't I like sun-dried tomatoes? Remember, a belief, something that is accepted, considered to be true, held as an opinion based on past experience or social influences, right? That's a dictionary definition. I was nowhere near that, right? I wasn't anywhere near a dictionary def definition of belief. I was dug in, I don't like these things. She asked why. That threw me for a loop. Without any reason, as a foundation for my deeply treasured disdain for sun-dried tomatoes, <laughs> I conceded, I dug my feet in, and again I said, you know what, I'll go ahead and I'll try the sun-dried tomatoes. It worse comes to worse, I'll pick them out. I couldn't find one reason, not one, when I had them before, why I didn't like them, why I said it, but for years and years and years I've been saying, yeah, I don't like sun-dried tomatoes. So, guess what? We got the number seven the Neptune. I'm sitting patiently and I'm waiting for the omelet to come and I pondered. Nervous, bordering on anxious. I know drama's building for you all. Will he like them? Hmm. Well, the omelet came. I took my first bite. It was a small test bite. You know, I was going to make sure, you know, because I don't like these things. Right. They were great. <laughs> so we have these fears or these beliefs that we bring with us and sometimes we don't even question them. So what are the beliefs that we carry? What about our deep-rooted beliefs that make us react so knee-jerk in our responses? How does this apply to our spiritual practice? How does this affect our free will? How does this influence our ability to make a good choice or even a bad one? How does this affect our faith in God? Like Dennis mentioned in my little bio, is I grew up without any religious affiliation, truly non-denominational. Uh, for the past 15 years or so, I've studied A Course in Miracles, which is not a religion. Uh, it's sort of like a tool book, a guide, a guide book that you can follow and change your perspective. And I think that that's what we should be exploring today about beliefs. So what I did in preparation is I explored the questions that I just asked. And I said, how would the course answer this? We call it the course, like we're familiar. So let's say the course. The course gives me the opportunity today to just provide a little tidbit of my perspective because I'm forever a student, and I'm always open to learn, and I'm doing these challenges, and I'm living this um, idea every day. It, it's um, not hard, but it's really difficult. So I looked up in the glossary of terms. Uh, the glossary of terms was put together by a man named Robert Perry. Robert Perry, I, I believe, I'm not going to give his bio because I don't really know it well, but I believe he's been studying and writing about the Course in Miracles for about 30 years, almost since uh, it got popular in our hippie kind of world. And Robert Perry uh, academics it more than the text. But for this purpose today, I thought I'd present some of the words that 
and the way the course talks about them, and they may actually fly right in the face of words that you know and other contexts of your spiritual and religious training, um, not conflict, but just, wow, I've never thought of guilt in that way. So, firstly, the course is a mandatory course. All of us are going to take it. Just when we take it is voluntary. That's in the introduction of the course. And what that means to me is the teacher will appear when the student is ready. We've all heard that. So the course talks about a concept called separation from God. And the way they describe separation is an event where at one point our human existence decided to separate from God and it gave birth to the world that we see. So the separation appears to all of us in the human existence to be real. However, the belief in separation is an illusion, according to the Course. It's created by our egos. It's a false belief, a belief where we believe we can tear ourselves out of God's mind. Instead, it seems like we took the belief in a unified heaven and we made it up into countless separate bodies and segments of time, little clips of time. The Course describes that we merely fell asleep, that we fell asleep to truth, to reality, and we dreamed that there's even a possibility that we can choose to live a separated existence in a separated universe. The Course talks about time as a progression of separate moments filled with judgment, change, attack, achievement, competition, birth, successes, death. All of those things are a component of, of the time we see in the world we made. The Course talks about forgiveness. The forgiveness in the Course's text is the key for all of us to collapse time, atone with each other, and find salvation. And all those words, words sound so religious, you know, like, wow, that sounds like Bible stuff. It sort of is Bible stuff because it's a, a message that we've been hearing a lot, but the context is different. The ego always speaks first, according to the Course. We believe that we can live a separate self, that I am me and you are not me. Even in your small speech, you said, we are all one. That's what the Course says. We are all facets of the divinity that was created by God, by Holy Spirit, by whatever name you give, that we can share with each other as love. The ego gives rise to our experience of being a separate entity bound by a body. And the Course says it's just an illusion that our true identity is at one meant with all. The body is only temporary, but our soul is eternal. So we're here just a short period of time in eternity, you know, 100 years, if, we, if we're lucky. The Course teaches that we only expect to be attacked because we secretly believe that ourselves are less than perfect in our own view we made up of ourselves. Right? The Course teaches we only expect to be attacked because we secretly believe that we are less than perfect in God's eyes. And we attack others because we outwardly believe they are less than perfect in the eyes of God. But definitely, they're less than perfect when we attack them in our eyes. The Course says fear is essential to the mood of the ego. Right? So the ego talks loud. It says, you don't like sun-dried tomatoes. 
right? Something simple, but true. It was something that I made up, and it wasn't really true. Rather than seeing visual forms, bodies, and shapes, we turn to the Holy Spirit. See, again, another biblical thing, the Trinity and all that. The Holy Spirit in the Course is literally the let go, let God thing that we all talk about. I say, hmm, I feel bad. I don't like some dry domain. No, I feel bad. And then I say, Holy Spirit, God, higher power, help me to see this situation differently. That's what the Holy Spirit's there for. It's a conduit, direct conduit. Now, your message may not come back to you in the moment, but the mindfulness that made you let go and ask, Holy Spirit, let me have a different perspective in this situation. Let me see my circumstance differently. That is release. It's release. You're saying, I am open to be guided by a higher power. I am not in control. Forgiveness. The relinquishment of our false perception that another has harmed us and therefore we are justified in resenting the attacker even when we are the attacker, which we all are sometimes. Forgiveness of self and others is the only way to reach salvation at one minute. Releasing this perception, forgiving, that the resentment itself was ever justified. That's what we're releasing. Not what the content of our resentment is. The sun-dried tomatoes were insignificant. It's why are we resenting at all, right? Is this resentment ever justified? Once you forgive yourself, that resentment will disappear immediately. There was a story uh, that Florence Scoville Shin wrote. Uh, she was like a 1920s spiritual person, and there was a whole period of time in our history where spirituality just blossomed in the uh, early part of the 19th or 20th century. And she told this story about how she was counseling this lady uh, and the lady had a fear of the, the typical superstitions, uh, 13, walking under ladders, so and so and so. And so um, Florence says, you know, you, you've got to face those fears. You've got to uh, uh, find out what's the source of those fears and how they're doing, because those fears don't really exist. So she walked out and, you know, I don't know what the lady was thinking, but Florence describes it as, not taking her advice. Like, no, I'm scared of those things and I'm going to keep being scared of them. Well, she arrived at a bank. She gets to the door, opens the door, and inside, right inside the vestibule, is one of those old library ladders, and it's right there. The only way to get into the bank is to walk under the ladder. So the lady turns away in fear, walks out back onto the street, she realizes what Florence had said, that it's, the fear isn't real. She gathered her thoughts, took a deep breath, walked back into the bank, and the ladder was moved. It wasn't even there anymore. An illusion, a belief about or a perception of reality which is false. The course breaks down all of our thoughts in two categories. Thoughts that are in alignment with God and all other thoughts. If our thoughts are in alignment with God, we are extending love, we are appreciating, we are grateful, we are in joy, we are um, existing together in a peaceful kind of hippie way that we love. When we're in fear, when we're in any other thought that disturbs that joy, disturbs God's will for us, according to the Course, is perfect peace and happiness. That's God's will for us. 
something which seems real, but it is not. The course expands the definition of illusion to include anything outside of heaven, anything separate from alignment from your higher power, all of which appears imperfect, finite, and painful. That's what we experience, right? We're either really good in alignment and in love and everything's great, or we're not. The miracle in The Course in Miracles, the thing we're all achieving, is not something big. It's not, God save me from my, right? It's, why don't I like sun-dried tomatoes? That's the miracle, like, wow, I went into a situation with a belief that was insignificant. But once I looked at that belief and challenged it just a little bit, it opened up my heart and I had sun-dried tomatoes. I also now swim in the ocean. I never swam in the ocean, but a friend said, come swim with me. I'm like, I don't swim. And I went swimming and I've been swimming since. So I'm doing it uh, uh, as a rebirth of Michael, like uh, not born again in a, in a Christian way, but a rebirth of Michael as an individual, uh, a non-married man. Uh, my wife passed away last year. So each one of these experiences is like I'm 15. You know, I'm trying to figure out what I'm navigating. And the course keeps me on track. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to challenge my beliefs. Uh, scary thing to challenge my beliefs, but a really wonderful thing. And I, I, you know, I advise a lot of people all week long about a lot of things, and I like to sometimes take my own advice. You know, I don't know that I do that that often. So, miracle. A divine healing of human perception which the normal laws of egoic thinking based on guilt, fear, sickness, and death are momentarily suspended. You can build miracles every moment. All you have to do is be willing and you witness them. And then you have another one and then you have another one and then they're commonplace. You're living in the miracle. This is carried out by the relationship with the Holy Spirit. Like I said, miracles are not reserved only for the big things, but can be witnessed in every aspect of your life, and they happen in the holy instant. The Holy Spirit shifts our perception from false to true, and thereby, thereby grants us instantaneous deliverance from the imprisoning, yet illusory, problems of this world, regardless of their size. There are no neutral thoughts. Please help me to see this differently. That's really all the willingness you need to get the answer that you're looking for. The holy instant, a moment in which we temporarily set aside all past beliefs and enter into a timeless present. A moment in which we momentarily leave behind our habitual, insane mindset and recognize only what is real, the unconditional love of spirit, the truth. A holy instant can occur privately. It doesn't have to be a public offering. It can be something that you resolve in yourself uh, during meditation, for instance. Or it can be shared by two or more people, which then they call in the Course a holy encounter. We know from spirituality teachings, when two or more gather in a common thought, the collective consciousness can change the energy of the whole world. And that's what the Course is talking about recognizing miracles and the holy instant when we change our thought by relying on God, relying on the Holy Spirit, and uh, guiding us directly to love. 
spiraling your word or spinning right i love that word because i use it all the time in my thoughts like i think of us doing this we're spiraling but where do we land we want to land back on love right let's spiral together and land on love it's an instant where we can each have the authentic uh, the opportunity to share authentic pure extensions of love with one another where we recognize that each of us is perfect exactly as we are now because we can't be any different than we are now we are perfect holy relationships are not restricted to romantic relationships they can occur between two colleagues spiritual teachers and pupils dentists and their patients but i'm not sure how that works in the we have been given by God a special function, a special form of extending forgiveness to ourselves and to others, forgiving, right? We're, we're giving love of ourself to say, I see you, I accept you exactly as you are, and I want to know about your journey without judgment, without attack. We're all teachers of God. Each of us has a sole function to teach others on behalf of God. Bringer of salvation is what the Course calls us, a savior, a miracle worker. At one point, we all are teachers of teachers. And many times, probably more often, we're students, just <laughs> wanting to see the truth and wanting to figure out what's disturbing our joy. The last thing I'm going to talk about is what Mr. Perry described, or, or the Course says is atonement, but what his definition. Atonement, all beliefs which are out of alignment with truth are wiped away by the realization our fears were not real in the first place, and hence, in reality, the rift with God never happened. The separation is impossible. The darkness only exists because we're not letting in the light that never changed. Atonement is said to undo errors rather than sins, correct perceptions rather than corrupting one's soul, and cancel out past errors rather than punishing you and making you pay for them. Atonement enables you to realize your errors never really occurred. Put simply, it wipes away what stands between us and God with the knowledge that nothing stands between us and God. I'll just re repeat that. Atonement wipes away what stands between us and God with the knowledge that nothing stands between us and God. It's a principle that the separation or fall from heaven never really occurred. It's a power that when we accept this gift from God, whatever we see in our mind heals our thinking. The miracle is thus an expression of the atonement, of the salvation. It's a plan for the return of all of us, all God's sons and daughters, a plan based on a principle of atonement, a process which the sonship, all of us, all those facets, all those little divinity sparks of energy that we're all sending out there, approaches our final reunion with God. That's what we're looking for, right? The salvation, the end time when, when we are in heaven. Atonement's purpose is the goal in which the Course aspires to, so that we all love more, manage our own emotions by really analyzing them. Why don't I like sun-dried tomatoes? 
you know, it, it wasn't significant, I know, and a lot of you, I sort of made it a joke and I wanted to focus on something so insignificant about that, but it added a lot of context to, to me in my growth, in my spirituality. A promise to me from God, that is my truth, God's love is unchangeable and pure, I choose right now to release my fear. I ask all of you, choose right now to release your fears. In closing, I want to say, uh, I, I actually have always closed with this because I, uh, it's a really interesting part about beliefs because how do we get beliefs? They are thoughts that we store. So the Course says, I'm affected only by my thoughts. I need but this to let salvation come to all the world. For in this single thought, everyone is released at last from fear. Now I have learned that no one can frighten me and no one can endanger me. I have no enemies. I'm safe from all external things. My thoughts can frighten me, but since these thoughts belong to me alone, I have the power to exchange each fear thought for a happier thought of love. I've crucified but myself, but God has ensured that I am redeemed. We're all made in the image of God. Divinity is us. We've all the gathered love in our rainbow hearts to give each other as we allow ourselves and others to follow their own beautiful, unique journey during this temporary period while we occupy these bodies. To me, each of you are perfect exactly as you are. I believe in rainbow hearts, a collective of energy and love and colors that all sit with me and sit with all of you that's free to share with everybody. To me, the universe is a spectrum of colors and energy flying around and we get to grab on. Let's grab on to the good thoughts, you know? We can grab on to the good thoughts. We can choose right now to extend and accept love, and we can choose right now to accept God's love. Unconditional, unchangeable, a miracle. And I'm going to order sun-dried tomatoes the next time they're on the menu. The, the, thank you so much for listening, and I, I, I hope I didn't, like the words of the Bible thing didn't um, cause anything, because the, they're so like, important to me as this message keeps getting told to me that the simplest thing to do is love but it's so difficult to always do that and I just that's the one I'm still trying to figure out how do I stay in love all the time so I'm gonna look for it thank you guys